In this video tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to use the Dream Report SPC module to add statistical process control functionality to your reports. The SPC module is an add-on option in Dream Report for performing SPC reporting on any data source, whether the data source is a real-time source such as a SCADA or HMI application, or directly from a PLC. From any historical data source such as a process historian or HMI historical log file, from any open data source such as SQL databases or CSV files, or manually enter data using the Dream Report Web Manual Data Entry feature. When looking at your data in the context of SPC analysis, you can achieve huge benefits in terms of profitability, process understanding, reduced costs and downtime, and a whole lot more. The SPC module provides a rich set of charts, tables, and specific statistical functions for SPC analysis. The components that make up the SPC module are as follows. The SPC configuration window is a user interface which allows for the definition of SPC data collection parameters for variable data items. These include data sources, targets and spec limits, and sampling methods. The SPC charts include X-bar or average, range, standard deviation, and histogram charts. The table objects enabled with the SPC module are an SPC process values table, which shows the raw measurements as well as the SPC calculations, and a histogram table, showing the frequency distribution of collected data points. Finally, a set of 20 SPC statistical functions are included in Dream Report. These include the grand average, calculated lower and upper control limits, standard deviations, CP, CPK, and many more. When using the SPC X-bar chart, you can specify which of the SPC rules you'd like to enforce on the chart. Dream Report supports the full implementation of the eight Nelson SPC rules, which are an extension of the four basic Western Electric SPC rules. All eight rules are displayed below in detail. The following slide summarizes the workflow when implementing SPC functionality in Dream Report. In Dream Report Studio, after creating a new project, or opening an existing project, connect to a data source using one of Dream Report's many communication drivers. The data source can either be a real-time data source, in which case you'd also need to set up a data logging group, or a historical data source. Optionally, Dream Report can use data directly from a SQL query, and in that case, no communication driver configuration is required for the data source. Next, create one or more SPC configurations, to do this, we'll open the SPC configuration window and specify either the data item to report on or a SQL query that will return data for the SPC objects. We also need to set up the SPC sampling methodology, either sample-based or time-based. And finally, specify the target and spec limits for the data item. These can either be hard-coded or reference other objects on a report that would provide the target, lower, and upper spec limits. Next, you'll create a report. On any report, add the SPC objects that you wish to include, such as an X-bar chart, a histogram, a table, or any of the statistical functions. When the object is placed on the report, double-click on the object and specify which SPC configuration you'd like to use for that object. Set any additional parameters, such as line colors, captions, SPC alarms, etc. And finally, a time period over which to report. At this point, you're ready to save and generate the SPC report. I'm going to open Dream Report Studio to a blank project and configure a communication driver to my SPC data source. Since my data happens to be stored in a database, I'm going to open and configure an instance of the ODBC historical values driver located under the Open Communications Protocol folder. I'll give this instance of the driver a unique name and then select an ODBC data source name, or DSN, that I've already configured in the Windows ODBC Manager and connect to the database. Dream Report lists all the tables and the views in the database. I'll select the table containing my SPC data and simply tell Dream Report which field in the table contains the logged values date and timestamp. I'll click OK and then add the configured driver to the list. At this point, we're ready to start defining our SPC configurations. On the SPC tab, I'll click on the SPC configuration icon. This will open a window that will allow me to specify all parameters for each SPC definition. For my first definition, 
I'll set up the configuration for height measurements of glass tubes that I'm manufacturing. I'll give the configuration a unique descriptive name and then specify whether the data will be coming from a tag item from the data source or from a SQL query. In this first example, I'm going to use the data source we just created and specify the height field as the data item. SPC can either use the raw data as it was logged in the data source, or we can pre-process or filter the data, just as we could in any other Dream Report reporting object before the data is used for the SPC reporting. We can apply a correction factor, apply an aggregated data filter, or filter the data based on some condition. For instance, only use the samples when product X was running. For the SPC calculation methodology, we can either use sample-based or time-based. In this first example, I'll use sample-based and specify a sample count of three. This means that every three measurements in my data set will be used per SPC sample. I'll then enter a known target value for the tube length or height, plus a lower and upper spec limit. Note that these are limits and not plus minus tolerances. Finally, we need to specify how the SPC control limits will be calculated. There are several industry accepted standards for calculating control limits, with the most common being based on the range average with a table of known coefficients. I'll click the plus button to add this to the list of SPC configurations. For the next SPC configuration, I'm going to build a SQL query to get tank temperatures from a SQL database. Before I can query a SQL type database directly, I need to set up a data source name in Dream Report by opening the DSN manager. I'm going to create a direct connection and provide the database connection details here. Let me test the connection and add it to my list of DSNs. Now that I have a DSN, I can copy or type in a raw SQL query or use any of Dream Report's SQL query management tools to create the query. Here I'll use the Visual Query Builder to help me build the SQL query. With the query built, I'll specify time-based as the SPC calculation methodology. I'll use the first five measurements for every one hour. If you wanted, for instance, six measurements per hour, but spaced at 10 minute intervals, you could create a sample-based 10 minute aggregated data filter, or ADF, on the raw data to get the 10 minute sub-intervals. Let me quickly set up the target and limit values for this configuration and the control limit calculation method and add this configuration to the list. Note that the target and limit values do not need to be hard-coded. By double-clicking in each field, you can then reference a report object that contains the specific limit value. We're now ready to build an SPC report. I'll create a new report and set its basic format and layout options. Back in the SPC tab, I'll select an X-bar chart object and place it on the report. From the SPC list, I'll select our tube height SPC configuration, or by clicking the Browse button, I can open the SPC configuration and create a new SPC configuration or edit an existing configuration. Next, I'll specify a time period over which to create the SPC chart. As with all Dream Report objects, the time period can be relative, fixed, absolute, batch-based, or calculated. I'm going to use absolute time for a time period where I know I have data in my data source. I'll now click the SPC Parameters button where I'll be able to specify the layout of the X-bar chart, displaying special SPC lines such as Grand Average, Target, Spec, and Control Limits, plus minus standard deviations, etc and line and label formatting for each selected line. Finally, in this window, we can enable any of the eight Nelson SPC rules, which are an expanded set of the four basic Western Electric rules. If a sample violates any of the rules on the chart, the sample will be shown with a red marker, as I've selected here. After closing the SPC parameters window, I can set the plotted line style, color, and marker options. At this point, all that's left to do is set the general appearance options of the chart, including a chart title, units to display, and the background color. I'll click OK, and the configured X-bar chart is placed on the report. I see that I've left the Y-axis grid checked. 
With all the special SPC lines that will be drawn at runtime, the chart might get a bit busy, so I'm going to uncheck the y-axis grid before I move on. OK, let's add an R or range chart under the x-bar chart. The other typical pairing with an x-bar chart is an S or standard deviation chart, but in this demo we'll just set up a range chart. Again, I'll choose the tube height SPC definition, use the same time period, and then click the SPC parameters button. Here we can choose to show lines for the upper and lower control limits based on the range average and the range average itself. I'll quickly format these lines and then we're ready to move on to the general appearance settings of the chart. The last chart I'll add to the report is a histogram. I'll select the histogram object and place it on the report. I'll select the tube height SPC definition and then specify what I want the histogram bars to display. Either a bar for each recorded value, down to a value precision, or a bar for value ranges. I'm going to specify the bar absolute range as 0.2 units, or I could set the range as a percentage. Next, I'll click the bar special lines button to specify and format the mean, target, spec limits, and plus minus standard deviation lines. Finally, in this section, we have the option of including a distribution line over the histogram. I'll use the same time period, leave the default bar colors, and set the general appearance options for the chart. Before I continue adding the SPC tables and statistical functions to a second page on the report, I want to apply a page template that I use for my reports, so that I can get an idea of the general formatting and layout of the report. Let me move these charts up a bit, and then right-click and insert a new page for the SPC samples. Back at the SPC menu, I'll select and add an SPC process values table to display the SPC samples with raw measurements. Using the tube height SPC configuration, I'll have the table display the raw values, average, range, and standard deviation for each sample. I could also add a table footer with calculations or aggregates on any column. I'll use the same time period and set up the general appearance options for the table. Now I'll add a histogram table to the report. Just like the histogram chart, this table will show the number of occurrences of individual values or value ranges in the SPC dataset. I'll give the table a name, select the SPC definition to use, and set the value range of 0.2. We'll come back to the Outline Rules section a little later. Once again, I'll use the same time period and set up the general appearance options for the table. The last object I'll add, back on the first page, is an automated statistical table. This table is not specific to SPC functionality, but it's a great way to quickly add multiple SPC calculations to a grid instead of using multiple single data objects. Once again, I'll use the same time period for the calculations. I first need to select the SPC data item and then select which SPC statistical functions I want to display. There are around 20 SPC functions included, but I'll just choose a subset of those for this demo. Having selected the functions, I then go into the settings for each one, type in a caption, select the SPC definition, and any additional options such as decimal places and advanced visualization settings. For instance, Change the text color if the result exceeds a certain value. I'll repeat this for each function and then click OK. Since I want the table to be displayed as a vertical grid, I'll quickly go back in and change the appearance settings. Finally, I'll move things around to get the layout I want. At this point, I'm ready to run the report. I'll save and run the project. Once the project is loaded, let me select this report and then generate it. On this first page, we see the X bar and R charts with the various special lines displayed and the SPC rule violations shown as red dots on the X bar chart. Next to the X bar chart, we see the automatic statistic table showing the SPC statistical functions we selected. This is a good reference to show the actual calculated values corresponding to the SPC special lines on the chart, plus a few others that I had selected. 
At the bottom of the page, the histogram shows the data distribution with a normalized distribution line plotted as well in dark green. On the second page, we see in the SPC samples table, the raw measurements for each sample are displayed, along with the average, range, and standard deviation for each sample. The histogram table shows the data distribution again, but in tabular format. Notice the value ranges in 0.2 increments and the frequency of occurrence of the values in each range. It would be nice to highlight the most and least frequent data ranges in this table to draw attention to what's going on with our data. We can set up outline rules in the histogram table to change background colors based on data frequency. I just want to highlight the highest and lowest frequencies on my table, so I'll add two rule conditions. However, you can add as many rule ranges as needed. Here, I'll set the background color to pink if I get two or fewer occurrences in a data range, and pale green if more than 14 occurrences. Note that by double-clicking in the From or To cell, you can browse for single data objects that contain the interval breakpoints, thereby making these ranges dynamic. Let's reload the report and see the effect of this when the report is generated. So, we've looked at these reports in PDF format. The reports might be automatically generated at the end of a shift, at the end of a production run, or under any other automated trigger. We can also generate the report on demand from the Dream Report web portal, where the user can select their own time range, or batch ID or lot ID to report over. First, in the Dream Report web portal, I'll simply click on the existing SPC report, and the portal will immediately open the most recently generated report. Next, I'll click on the new dynamic report icon, which will allow me to select a specific time period to report on. I'll specify an absolute time range, and then generate the report. You'll notice that since I selected a longer three hour period from noon to 3 p.m., the original report was set for 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., we now get more samples plotted on the charts and in the tables, with a different data distribution on the histogram chart and tables. So there you have the steps to implementing SPC in your Dream Reports. Of course, the real benefit of using Dream Report for your SPC reporting is that you can combine data from completely different data sources in different formats to get a real understanding and the implications of different factors on product and process quality. Thank you.